Welcome back to Blau Dev, everyone. Today we're going to be going over how to host your Flutter web app through Firebase. So let's get into it. So the first thing that we're going to do, I'm going to assume that you've already created your Flutter project and you probably already got a website built. So what we're going to first do is we're going to go to Firebase, so console.firebase.google.com, and we're going to create a project. I'm going to call this web app. I'm going to allow Google Analytics. You'll want to have that for your website. And then you're gonna click Create Project. Now while that's creating, we're gonna go over to our Flutter project and we're gonna run a couple of commands here to set up the Firebase console. So the first thing that we're gonna to do to set up Firebase on our web app is we are going to install Firebase tools. So this is the Firebase client. And so you need to have NPM on your computer. If you don't, you can see just Quit Google and you can download it for whatever your machine is. And then regardless of what kind of machine you're using, Linux, Mac, Windows, they'll all use the same NPM command, NPM install global Firebase tools. So once you run that, and in my case, I've already run it, so I'm expecting it to error, but yours should run and it should take roughly two to three minutes to run. Um, but once that's been done, we are going to next log into the Firebase client and let me show you what that looks like. So just like I said, it aired out for me because I'm already got it installed. And what you're one gonna type next is Firebase login. In my case, I'm already logged in. So you can see here, it says already logged in as Blyldev. Um, however, if you haven't logged in already, it will pull open a um, window in your default browser. It'll have you sign into your account. So um, that's all we need to do there. And make sure you sign into the account that you've created your project under. Uh, if you have multiple Google accounts, um, you might mistakenly log into the wrong one. So as far as this goes on Firebase, um, this is all we're going to do for now. Eventually, we are going to get into the hosting tab, but not quite yet. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go back to our project, and we're going to run a really quick Flutter web build. I'm sorry, Flutter build web. Mix those up all the time. And what that's going to do is underneath the build folder, it is going to create a build that we can then deploy to Firebase. And so we want, we just want to create that because in this next step, when we're setting up Firebase for this project, it is going to ask us for a path to where we want to find the files. And so we just want to make sure that we get it deployed or get it built now. Our next step, we're going to run Firebase init. Okay, and what we are gonna do is we're gonna go down to hosting. I'm gonna click hosting, enter. Then it prompts us to use an existing project, create a new project, um, and so on. We're gonna click on use an existing project with enter. And then we're gonna go down and we're gonna find our um, project that we wanna use. In this case, it's web app. And so just use the title found here on the right. It should match up with the title that you've made for um, your project on Firebase. So we've navigated to it, click enter. Then it's gonna say, what do you wanna use as your public directory? So which we are gonna direct it to our build folder. So we say build slash web. Configure as a single page app. We're gonna say yes. Set up automatic builds with GitHub. I'm gonna say no. File already exists. Do we want to overwrite? No. And that's all we have to do. And then from there, we've run Firebase deploy. Okay, it's deploying the app. Awesome. It's going to give us a host URL right away that we can use. So there we go. So there's our web app. So it's been deployed. So you could use this URL um, on your portfolio or elsewhere if you just want to show off a project. If you have a custom domain, though, that you want to be using, what you're going to do is we're going to go back to Firebase. We're going to go down to hosting, not storage. And you'll see here we've got this set up. You're going to click on add custom domain and then enter the domain that you own. It'll ask you to verify ownership. In the case that you have it through Google Domains, it should automatically verify. You won't have to go and do that step. And I'm going to go over to another project to show you 
what it's going to look like um, once you've set that up. So I'm going to go to hosting, and you'll see here that I've already connected um, Blyle Dev. And it's going to look something like this with a record type, the host URL, and a value um, that we're going to use when setting up our domain and connecting it to our host. And so what you're going to do is you're going to take the value and you're going to go over to your domains. So in my case, it's um, domains.google where I manage it from. I'm just going to sign in very quickly. Okay. All right. And what we're going to do is you're going to go down to DNS, scroll down to where you see custom resource records. And every different service, whether you purchased it through GoDaddy or, or Google Domains or whatever it may be, um, there's a place to do this um, no matter the service you're using. So we're just going to leave this blank. Um, we're going to make sure that this tag lines up with what we saw um, for the resource type on Firebase. Uh, this right here is your time to launch. One hour is the default. So one H is the default. You can increase it to be 24 hours or five minutes or whatever you want. There's pros and cons to doing that. And so I would research it a little bit before you change it away from the default. In my case, I've just kept it the default. And then you're gonna enter the IPv4 address, um, which is the value that we found on Firebase. Once you've done that, you're good to go. Just wait roughly 24 hours or so, and your website will be connected. If you make any changes to your app in the future, and you want to deploy those changes to your website, all you have to do is run Flutter Build Web. It'll create a new build version and place it in the build folder. And once that's done, all you have to do is run Firebase Deploy, and it'll update your site. And it's that easy. I hope this was helpful for you guys. If it was, make sure you click that like button and subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys next time.